Sometimes the works that you would like to analyze using text data mining tools are already available in a high quality digital form. You may be able to get what you need in ebooks acquired from Amazon or journal articles downloaded from a publisher's website, or you might simply be able to scrape user generated content from a social media site, or even better, perhaps someone else has already done this work and is happy to share their source materials. These modes of acquisition all sound very promising, but they raise a new set of questions that takes us beyond the parameters of traditional copyright law. Some of the actions we have just described might involve circumventing technological protection measures or possibly illegally gaining unauthorized access to someone else's computer. In this section, we are going to take a look at the issues raised by the anti-circumvention provisions of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act and, later on, the application of the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act and similar anti-hacking laws. And let's begin by talking about the problem of digital locks. The first thing we need to do here is to clarify some terms. Works in digital form may be protected by technological protection measures that control access to copyrighted works. These technological protection measures, or TPMs, are also referred to as Digital Rights Management, or DRM, in some contexts. We're probably just going to use these terms interchangeably, but the simplest way to think about TPM or DRM is to think of it as a digital lock. Like physical locks, digital locks can be used to control access to a thing or to limit what can be done with it. Digital locks are a potential problem for text mining initiatives because often the cleanest and simplest way to build a corpus is to get access to authorized copies of the original works in digital form. In the world of books, for example, cracking the encryption on an ebook sold by Amazon would give the researcher access to a much cleaner copy than could be achieved through OCR, optical character recognition. This mode of acquisition is also preferable in some cases because it overcomes coverage limitations in existing repositories. And for those of you working with large volumes of audiovisual material, defeating encryption may be the only way to get content into a text mining database because analog capture might take years. So there are some obvious attractions to breaking digital locks, but building a research corpus by breaking DRM has at least one very significant disadvantage. In the United States, at least, it's illegal. In 1998, Congress added some special provisions to the Copyright Act, which made breaking digital locks that protect copyrighted works a civil and also potentially a criminal offence. These so-called anti-circumvention rules apply separate and independent of any underlying copyright infringement. In the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, Congress added Section 1201 to the existing copyright statute. Section 1201 prohibits the circumvention of technological measures that restrict access to or copying of copyrighted works. It also prohibits the creation or distribution of tools that facilitate circumvention. The various parts of Section 1201 are generally referred to together as the anti-circumvention provisions of the DMCA. The DMCA creates civil remedies and criminal sanctions for violations of these provisions. There is no fair use exemption under the anti-circumvention laws of the United States. The hardest thing to accept about the anti-circumvention provisions of the DMCA is that they make breaking digital locks illegal 
even when the copying or access that this allows would be covered by the fair use doctrine. There are some good normative arguments that this shouldn't be the case, but to date those arguments have not convinced courts in the United States. Thus, although the anti-circumvention provisions of the DMCA were not intended to limit or restrict fair use, courts have not treated fair use as a defense to the anti-circumvention provisions either. To give you a concrete example, this means that although copying ebooks for the purpose of text data mining research would be protected by the fair use doctrine, breaking the DRM on those ebooks to make that copying possible would still be unlawful. The DMCA contains exceptions for reverse engineering and encryption research, but there are no similar provisions for text mining. This may change. The Copyright Act authorizes an administrative procedure whereby the Librarian of Congress may grant temporary three-year exemptions to the DMCA anti-circumvention rules. At the time of recording, a group based in the Samuelson Law Technology and Public Policy Clinic at UC Berkeley is currently pursuing this, but they have a lot of work to do. To make the case for a text mining exception, they will need to show that the underlying use is non-infringing that the absence of an exemption adversely affects users or is likely to do so in the near future. If you think that your experience could help them make this case, please let me know and I will put you in touch with the right people. In April 2019, the European Union adopted the Digital Single Market Directive, the DSM Directive, which features two mandatory exceptions for text and data mining. EU members have until June 7, 2021, to implement the directive in national legislation, and our current assessment of the impact of the EU directive may change once we see exactly how that implementation proceeds. Our current view is that the mandatory exception for text data mining by research organisations and cultural heritage institutions under Article 3 of the DSM directive seems to preempt otherwise applicable anti-circumvention laws. And it also overrides contract or license terms that otherwise would restrict the ability to circumvent digital locks. Individuals and organizations relying on the narrower exemption in Article 4, i.e. anyone who is not a non-profit educational institution or cultural heritage institution, remain subject to the European anti-circumvention laws and don't get the benefit of contractual override. Taking into account all of this information, researchers in the United States need to make their own assessment as to whether the risks of potential civil and criminal penalties under the DMCA for violating the anti-circumvention rules are worth the rewards. We are aware that this practice is relatively common and that in many contexts, the chances of enforcement action being taken are fairly low, but we are not in a position to recommend it.